The 6.5 is on the road in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at Oracle Cloud World. And Daniel, guess what? We are talking about cloud, as you would expect, but there's a tremendous amount of discussion about AI. And I got to tell you, the fireworks, you always like to have fireworks at a show, and we definitely got those. You know, over the last decade that I've been on the road doing these events, I don't know that I can remember a time that an event kicked off on the same day as it had its earnings, Yes, which was super interesting uh, because it's always really great to kind of see how these two things, we always say we're like market truth tellers, right? We talk about the products in the industry, we're industry analysts, but we always say that the street is the real truth teller about <laughs> right. how good or bad a business is doing. And so to see kind of a bunch of cool announcements come out, a bunch of AI stories start to emerge and then see how the market reacted all in one day, what a great opportunity. No, it really was. And I can't think of a better person to bring on the 6.5 than Jason Maynard with Oracle. Jason, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here with you guys. Uh, Thanks for coming to Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. It's like our second home as, as analysts. We're thinking about we need to get a condo, maybe an apartment here, but thank you. Yeah. No, it's great to have you guys. It's good yeah. to spend some time. It is great to have you back. And by the way, in the last three years, what a ton of innovation. You've moved into a, a new role, really leading revenue ops for the whole of Oracle. Uh, it's been great to watch your progression in the company, but Pat kind of said, it. look, there's some big cloud moments, some big AI moments. I'm going to start with AI because yep. that is the thing that is the rage. Every company right now, I like to say, has an AI story. Some are better than others. Some are very obvious, like, hey, we build a GPU and sell it. That makes a lot of sense. Some are yep. like, you know, we have this cool AI button feature inside the app somewhere that nobody's paying for. Oracle seems to have a very broad uh, strategy because you have infrastructure, you got applications. Uh, Jason, I just data. Love data. I'd love to sort of hear how Oracle tells people that their AI story is different, knowing that yeah. there are so many out there right yeah, now. Yeah, no, it's a, it's an interesting question. You're industry analyst. So if you take a step back, though, we go through technology platforms every 10, 15, sure. 20 years, right? Mainframe to minis, yep. PC, client server. We had early internet, web 2.0, mobile, right, social, all these things change. And from a business standpoint, they're all about the quest for greater productivity. How do you make your business better, right? And so AI, I think right now we're at the, almost like a Netscape browser moment, right? If you think about chat GPT, it's sort of a similar sort of inflection point in the industry where it sort of opens everybody's eyes up to the possibilities. But what's interesting is when the Netscape browser came out, there had been 30 years of work before that moment. Exactly. Before it sort of became mainstream. And I think that's where I see right now. It's a very similar analogy that we're, we're at that moment where all sorts of potential and possibility is now in the eyes for consumer use cases or business. So to answer your question, what does make Oracle different? I'll go back to the core foundation, which is we do data, we do core infrastructure, and we do applications, both horizontal as well as industry. And we're taking a strategy of embedding AI into everything we do. I like to joke, you know, our AI strategy is not wingman or bolt on right. or Frank and AI. <clears throat> like we're not trying to stick it onto something like an appendage and be like, hey, we can charge you 20% more because this has got the AI thing. So internally, we talk a lot. Best AI needs the best data, right? We're going to get to a point, if you think about applications, will you even know you're using AI? I hope not. Probably right? not. Probably not, right? Now, we're, we're going to have agents, right? There's going to be a role for those. But I think the, the view is that it's going to be in everything we do, right? To your point, we have it in bring your AI to the data you have, core OCI. Obviously, we're running all sorts of interesting supercomputers with NVIDIA and all sorts of AI partners. But into the application layer, there'll be agents. But there'll also be things that you don't even know you're using AI, right? It's just like, oh, my application is better. And so I think our differentiation is we do a little bit of everything, right, in terms of AI, and it depends where you're at in the stack. And ultimately, how we're going to add value, because being different isn't good enough, it's what can you do with that differentiation, is how do we bring that together for a customer so they get much more value right. out of the relationship. Uh, some of the things we do as industry analysts is, is for earnings, we, we go on broadcast video. and I've seen you. I, I, you guys are CNBC famous. We, we do a few. <laughs> we do a few. So anyway. I, I, I unmute when you guys go on. Just Not since I, yesterday. I, I, I appreciate record, that. I unmute, you know, I was yeah. out running as a former Wall Street analyst. I'm like, oh, I know those guys. You're just I, watching the ticker. You I don't want to hear. Until, I, well, if, I, if I see you two go on, I unmute at my okay. desk. 
So I'm getting ready for the show. Uh, they're bringing me on Yahoo Finance. And about five minutes before I go on, this press release crosses the wire that uh, uh, Oracle and AWS are, are forming this alliance. So I have about 15 minutes to, to go we through didn't this. A lot of time, did we? Well, it's not necessarily, <laughs> I mean, it's just, I know how these things work, but I'm about to go on air and I'm going through this. The good news is it, it, was, it was something that was similar to, to what you did with Azure and yep. Google, but I think the, the, the cool part, the provocative part, is the fact that um, this partner has a database that is called Redshift, and uh, the thesis, right, and this is the way I tell the story, was the thesis was, well, maybe we don't need Oracle anymore, enterprise don't, but here we are, huge announcement. C yeah. Can you talk us through uh, why you're, I think I know why, you never ask a question until you, you don't know the answer, but tell us about what your customer is demanding. How did this come together? What's the benefit to your customers? No, it, it, it's, I think it's a really important moment actually in technology it's it's you know you it's guys big. you guys cover the industry i mean big. it's big it's a yes. really big deal um you know i did a few texts as well um has hell frozen over you know, I, what, I, what's going on here? i like, said it on air <laughs> you know it's it, and and i it's funny if you go back if you go back a couple of years larry larry's been talking about multi-cloud mm -hmm. right so he yeah. signaled this era right and i think it was two cloud worlds ago he talked about the walled garden approach to clouds, right? right? And that the that the internet was open, distributed, right? Data could, you know, freely flow between applications. Yes. Um, you know, they're part of the name of AWS is web services. So if you're old enough to remember <laughs> early 2000s in computing technology, mm. we talked about composite applications yes. and being able to bring together all sorts of different services capabilities. And so all of that, I think, when you when you think about where the natural evolution of computing is going, is that we're not going to have walled garden clouds. That clouds are going to have to be open. Clouds are going to have to be integratable. Right. And the reality is Oracle customers run the most mission-critical data in the world, uh, from defense yes. know, intelligence organizations to telcos to banks to you name it. Um, it. It was only logical that we could take an Oracle database on OCI and put our cloud in the other clouds. And ultimately it's about customer choice. Right? Sure. It's about customers want to be able to mix and match. Um, as much as vendors all would love it to be a homogenous environment and yes. just buy from one vendor, <laughs> the reality is technology you know, layers over time and we live in a heterogeneous world. And so I think this is an acknowledgement that give customers choice, give them the freedom to move their data, and frankly, give them what they need to deliver the best outcome for their business. And there, it was, there was a situation in which I think both companies came to the realization that you were doing well for the customer. Yeah. And I think there is that point where it's like, you know, your few decide, like, can we help our customers? Right. We win. You know, we talked to, you know, we had a small group with uh, Evan Goldberg, your CEO of Net, NetSuite. And, uh, you know, I kind of asked that question about the implementation of AI and everything. He's like, look, we think if we put it in everything and it works really well, it's not about charging. We'll get more customers and they'll spend yeah. more and we'll grow. And like, it's kind of that, like in the end, you know, by the way, there were some wars that I thought would end sooner than AWS and Oracle would make an announcement together. So, um, you know, I won't, I won't, I won't, delve, I won't delve deeply into politics here, but I actually, there were scenarios in which I thought that was possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk about all this because the market really met that announcement, what I would call a very strong quarter. I think it was 46% OCI growth, double digit application growth yeah. um, with with a great response. I saw a double digit, uh, you know, turn. And of course, you know, market minute, who knows what it is at right now, but it was yeah. a great, great result. I mean, a company like Oracle doesn't tend to move double digit percentages on any news yeah. ever. <clears throat> um, so people liked it. I mean, Larry was absolutely on fire. Um, you know, he's talking about hundreds of data centers now, thousands of data centers yeah. in the future. He's talking about tens of thousands of GPUs going into hundreds of thousands and millions of GPUs in the future. He's talking about sovereign clouds and solving that. I mean, Talk about putting together the infrastructure, the data, the application layer, and the opportunity. By the way, he shut down all bear cases in like one comment. <laughs> like that there is no end of this. Market, like, market like, cases, yeah. You know, market bear thesis about AI. Like that there's some end of this. Like all of a sudden CapEx is over next year. He's like, let me tell you the story about kilowatt or sorry, megawatt. And then let me tell you gigawatt. Like, and he, 
you know, talk about this. Because, I mean, you're, you're talking about from hundreds to thousands, GPUs to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. Like, this AI infrastructure story is huge. I mean, it's, it seems Oracle is incredibly bullish. Well, I, I think a couple of couple things just to, to touch on. So, first of all, don't bet against Larry. It's a very important <laughs> lesson. And so, I think part wow. of this is, I think, the you know, these things take time, right? And when, when you think about Oracle, you know, Larry makes bets and investments that take an incredible, I, I would say take time to pay off and he'll do it the right way. And so we did Gen 1, then we did Gen 2. Gen 2, you know, I would say we're hitting our inflection point now with Gen 2 OCI as that comes to fruition. But he tackles tough problems and you can't solve those problems overnight, right? You know, like what we're doing in a different topic, what we're trying to do in healthcare. Yeah. Okay. I mean, these are these are things that he has the appetite to take on right. and to make long-term bets and long-term investments. And so that's part of what you're saying. I think so you just got to take baseline that as sort of how Larry thinks about it. There is no impossible, we're going to fix this or solve this. I think the second thing is when, when you look at the growth of AI and you think about the broader implications in the, in the industry, it's it's hard to see a world where it's not embedded into everything. Sure, right. And I know we, we we everybody's like, well, give me a use case or help me understand where it's being adopted today. All you're really debating is where you're at on that adoption curve, right? In terms of are you if right. you use a baseball analogy, is it the first inning, second inning, third inning, or something like that? Digestion. Yeah, it, it sure as heck ain't the sixth. Yeah, right. I think you can say that it's very early in this cycle, so you're gonna get you know, starts and stops, and you're going to have periods of time where it plateaus a bit as, as the technology improves, but also as people figure out the use cases, right? I mean, if you take Evan's comment, uh, you know, the, it, the AI in NetSuite may be transparent to the user. Right. Right. It just <clears throat> means the micro job function that you had to create as a small business because there were gaps in the software that required manual process meant that you had to hire this, all these people. And that automatically goes away with the new release and you're able to free up that labor to go do more productive things. I, I would use that as an interesting analogy for how this is all going to work. When you think about, though, the consumer side, you know, when you speak about the frontier models, that's where you sort of say, well, this is early. And Larry threw out some numbers in terms of what he expects. Let me say like a thought about 100 billion. 100 billion yeah. Plus, yeah, I mean, so... You know, it, I think, like I said, we're very early in this adoption cycle. Um, and, you know, we're obviously making big investments in this yeah. with a different architectural approach. Uh, but all through the stack, we're looking at different ways that we can we can help our customer. Yeah, Jason, I love the historical perspective. I mean, I love history. And this is playing out exactly like what we saw uh, with mainframe to mini, then client server, uh, PC, uh, local mobile, social, right? Fits and starts, there was a build out, right? Yep. You need the build out, you need people who are uh, laying in huge investments, right? Railroad tracks, yep. right? Going through mountains and, but you know at the end, something amazing has come out and even the first reasons that people automated anything, even getting off of farms to, to equipment is, is to increase efficiency, uh, increase revenue and profits and make society better, right? That That's kind of the groundwork for this. We are going to get there, but yeah, I, I just, I love that. I, I, th I think it's interesting too. You know, I I get my dog food delivered to my house for my pup. Okay? Right. There was a period of time where we thought that was the worst, the best the business idea and then the worst, worst business, business idea. idea. Exactly. And now it's like the most convenient thing to keep my dog Louie fed. Right. Exactly. So these things go through, you know, peaks and, and, yeah. and valleys all the time. Yeah. And I think that sometimes if, when you think about this in context, you can, you can over extrapolate data points. In right. The so uh, we're two keynotes in uh, yep. so far. Uh, Safra, a lot of conversations uh, about customers. And this is my monologuing when the CIA <laughs> got up there and, and said, hey, we really appreciate that another company cares about security as much as we do. I mean, that was like everything went off. I'm not going to ask you any questions about the CIA. Uh, but I do want to ask you about, you know, Larry got up and talked, had basically his vision keynote, talked a lot about multi-cloud. What were the new things? You talked about what Larry brought to the game years ago and what he said prognosticating about heterogeneous environments, uh, hybrid multi-cloud, what 
exclamation points did he talk about this time? Well, the, the, the multi-cloud thread, I think, is just sort of getting pulled, right? Yeah. I think I, I would say analysts like yourself, you, out, you go out and talk to customers. You see this is what they want. It's what they want. It's yes. what they want. Right, and it's your joke about, I can't believe it finally happened. I thought we were gonna have peace in certain <laughs> regions before this. You, you know, the, this is, this I think is the, the fulfillment of what customers have been asking for. They do want choice, right? So Larry, Larry obviously is talking a lot about what this means in terms of you can be multi-cloud, but you need to do it in a secure way. Right. So there was intentionality behind having the CIA on stage to talk about commitment to security, commitment to making sure that data Right, which is arguably the foundational, sure, layer, the gold for every business is safe and secure, um, but also being able to do this in an open way. And so those core themes you're going to see play out over the next couple of years. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot more we can do sure. with not just AWS, but with with Google and with Microsoft. Yeah. Right there, it's it, they're interesting bedfellows, right, <laughs> from the standpoint that we all compete. But what, what I will say that's really invigorating about this is that because we are now all partners, with each of the, the companies, there's some really interesting things that we can do together where maybe before we wouldn't have done Sure. It. And I think that's, the, I will say, the, the exciting part is like what you saw today with, you know, with AWS on stage, more to come on unique business models, unique arrangements that we can make where we say, hey, you know what? Since we're now friends, right. look what we could do here together. Wouldn't that yeah. be kind of cool? Yeah. Right? And I think that's where it's opened up the possibility. So I'm teasing you. I'm not oh, I'm, you oh, oh, I'm in I'm there. I'm not giving you everything, right? you got to come to Cloud World 25. Right? Exactly. I can't, can't pre-announce that. But, but just it, it's opened the door now for us to be much more, I think, open to potential because we're all sort of working together in, in various shapes and forms. I love it. Well, Jason, we could probably go on for quite a bit longer, but uh, it is a busy, busy uh, Oracle Cloud world, and uh, I know we've got events to get to. You've got events to get to. Uh, we should do this again, uh, if not at 25, maybe sometime in between. Love to keep hearing about these use cases, and love to hear how you're creating peace in major regions. All over the world. <laughs> uh, we're going to take this model, apply it everywhere. We'd love to have you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cloud World will be on tour. We might even have to come to Austin and uh, see you guys. Yeah, no, I wasn't even going to complain about your, your, your leaving Austin. We still love having you there. Enjoy looking at those buildings. We, st the we still have offices in Austin. <laughs> know, the, right, the offices right. are going to stay. We're just building a little one up in Nashville. There we go. Subtly abandoned. But I can't wait to see what you guys <laughs> are doing in the healthcare space. Some very, very cool stuff. And love seeing tech move into other parts of the country. Totally. Am, uh, you know, we're Midwesterners, Jason. Yeah. So we love it. So... Thanks for joining so much. Uh, let's do this again. Thank you. Appreciate your time, guys. Thanks. And thank you, Thanks. everybody, for tuning in with us. We appreciate you joining the 6-5. For Patrick Moorhead and myself, we got to take off. But hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our episodes here. See you later.